So we've decided to invite some top achievers uh, of the IEB matric class of 2019. So in studio, we have uh, Dina Zubov from Crawford College in Lone Hill. We have Rafaela Halkas from Trinity House and Chardonnay Mudley from uh, Tiger Valley. All of them, get this, have managed eight distinctions. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome and congratulations. How are you guys feeling? Chardonnay, start with you. I'm overwhelmed, 100%. Yeah. Um, I didn't expect to do this well, but I did work for it. So. Right, definitely. Yeah. So, did you expect it, um, Dennis? No, I wouldn't no. say I expected it. Um, but, I mean, I'm very happy that I got it. Uh, right. All the hard work paid off. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure, Raphael, you expected it. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how much hard work and preparation goes in, you know yourself, you're prepared, yeah. but you never know the outcome. So, so talk to us, Rafael, about this, this hard work that we keep on hearing uh, this morning. It's a common refrain. What's the recipe for success here? I think you need to start preparing way in advance uh, because grade, grade 12 work actually yeah. starts in the track. Uh, sorry, grade 11. So I think if you continuously right. practice your work, Raphael, I think we, you, we're going to fix up your mic. It's a bit of an issue. So, Chardonnay, let's, let's pick it up with you with regards to the, the re recipe for success. What is it for you? For me, it was I knew what my goal was, yeah. and that's to study overseas. And mm. I knew just how big the stakes were. Mm. And I used that to drive me every day. Mm. When I was tired, I mm. would say, you're going overseas. <laughs> you need to work hard for right. this. So it's just find that one goal uh -huh. and stick to that. Dennis, uh, did you feel, w at what stage did you feel any pressure to achieve? Well, um, I guess throughout the whole of matric, grade yeah. 11, um, there's really, there's, there's a lot of pressure uh, on students to do well mm -hmm. you know, for their uh, careers. Um, the most stress was probably finals for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So where is this pressure coming from? Is it, is it from, from family, from friends, from your educators? Uh, everywhere, I guess. Yeah. Uh, my family didn't pressure me that much. Um, there wasn't that much pressure. Um, yeah. How, how would yeah. you handle this pressure, uh, Rafaela? In, uh, because I'm sure it's, it, it gets to a point where you have to, I guess, be confident in yourself in terms of what your goals are, as Chardonnay was saying. She knew what she wanted to do and in trying to achieve that. So how do you balance it? I think it's very important to stay positive yeah. and to surround yourself with positive people like your family and your friends mm. and just remember at the end of the day there is an outcome and you just need to try your best to get through that time period. And especially at this last year, leading a balanced life mm -hmm. is key, isn't it? Because you're going to try uh, not only balance your studies with, with sport, but also have a bit of a social life, isn't it, Chardonnay? For me, it was 100% balance. Yeah. Um, I know that I needed to work hard, and I did work very hard. Mm. But I am also human, yeah. and I needed to take a break every once in a while and spend time with friends and yeah. family. And yeah. it's honestly probably why I did well. Yeah, I mean, you know, when when you've been talking to many top achievers, they say they achieve this because they started working hard at grade one. You know, but, but put that in practical terms. How was it for you, Dennis, in terms of that, that journey to matric? Okay, so, well, I've always um, kept my grades up, worked hard, but grade 10 was when I really thought, like, and I decided uh, I want to do well, like, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I really started pushing myself in grade 10, um, and yeah, just working hard until matric. Yeah. At what stage, uh, Rafaela, do you, you pick a career? Um, because I remember when I was in, in primary school, I, was, I wanted to become a pharmacist. And my cousin was going to become a doctor, so she would pass on the, the patients to us, and we were going to make millions of uh, <laughs> rands. You know? But things didn't work out quite as well as that. But uh, you know, take us through when you pick a, a vocation. And does it change constantly? When do you, you know, say, OK, this is what I want to do, and this is how I'm going to achieve it? Well, I will be studying medicine next year, and that's right. always been quite fixed for me. Like yeah. I think even from primary school, because I always felt that through that degree I could make the greatest contribution to society. Mm. So it never really changed for me. I think I just saw doctors around me, and I was really inspired by them. Mm. And uh, Shardana, you say you want to head over, uh, you want to go overseas. Yes. Why not apply your trade here in South Africa? I'm very aware that the medical sector in South Africa is struggling mm. and I'm also going to be studying medicine and I'd like to go overseas and learn their rare skills and bring it back here because South Africa is poor 
and struggling and they need the help that they can yeah. get. So you want to do medicine as yes. well. What's your guys' thoughts? I mean, I'm sure you, you guys have been reading up on the, the NHI and some of the challenges that might come with it. And you, want to, you say you want to go overseas and you want to eventually come back to South Africa. What's your thoughts on NHI? Um, <laughs> wow, that's a question. <laughs> um, I think ideally it's a good idea. It's yeah. going to help more people if yeah. practiced well enough. Yeah. But I think everyone's afraid of whether it's going to be practiced well yeah. enough. Right. Uh, Dennis, you, what do you want to do after? So, I'm um, planning to study electrical engineering. Right. And same as her, uh, I want to study in the US. So, I've applied to a few universities and we're just waiting for mm. the decisions now. But yeah, electrical engineering. What sort of advice did you guys get in terms of helping you, aiding you pick a career? Just follow what you love, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Whatever excites you at school. Don't so do what doesn't make you happy. Right, right. And, uh, I mean, is it a foolproof idea? I mean, uh, because there's going to be mistakes along the way, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, how can you be, as a, as a youngster, be sure that this is what you want to do? You can't be sure. Mm. I don't think you can ever be sure. Yeah. Um, and you should just know that if you're not happy one day, there's mm. still time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You still have your whole life. Right. I mean, definitely hard work. Uh, comes into play here. Um, we know that South Africa, as you've mentioned, we struggle with unemployment. It's sitting at over 29%. Youth unemployment is a major issue. Uh, Rafaela, when you were picking a career in terms of medicine, uh, did you get any advice in terms of the various avenues that you can explore other than the big to, let's say, uh, medicine and, and becoming a lawyer. You know, that's what everybody uh, seems to be, want to do around the world, you know. But uh, did you get those options? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah. And I'm very thankful for my school, especially Trinity House, because they always had career evenings. They always encouraged us to explore other options and not only go for the stereotype jobs. Yeah. <laughs> Dennis, how much of an impact did your educators make on your success? Uh, very, very big impact. Mm. Um, I've got to say my teachers are some of the best people in my life uh, and they've, they've really helped me a lot. Um, yeah. My maths teacher, Ms. Pike, um, she's really been helpful mm. uh, with all my success. Mm. And they've, they've really been a big help, yeah. And for you, uh, Um I would say that at school I have a little family yeah. um, who are my teachers and, right. and they, they saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And they are definitely the reason that mm. I was so successful because yeah. they believed it more than I ever did. Right. Look, you guys are in the state of euphoria now. You know, you, you've achieved, you worked hard, you've achieved. What's your advice to those who haven't achieved, uh, Rafaela? I think it's not the end of the world. Mm. And it, before marks, you're a person yourself. And I think everyone has their own achievements in different sectors of their life. Mm. And so maybe you better at sports or culture, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't be down about it. I would just continue because you will have success in your life. Yeah. You, Dennis? Yeah, I would say don't give up. You know, keep working. If you keep working at something, you will get good. You will achieve. Yeah. Um, there's always options. I mean, if you, if you didn't do really well in your exams, um, there, there still will be options for you, and it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Don't I mean, Shadai, this is not the end of the world, as Dennis says. It's, it's a one step mm -hmm. in this greatest scheme of life isn't it mm -hmm. um it's it's the beginning yeah as much as it feels like the end we've just finished mm. school um it's the beginning of more to come and things are going to be more challenging yeah. and we're going to enjoy more things and that's what we need to right. look forward to so what's what's what happens tomorrow big parties everywhere I think I'm going to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did not sleep last night. I'm right. going to sleep. Right. Yeah. And uh, you, Dennis? Yeah, I just celebrate yeah. with friends and family, relax. Yeah. Funny, just get a break. I, I'm sure it's same for yeah, you, same. Rafaela. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much indeed for coming through. And everything of the best uh, in your future endeavors. Appreciate thank it. Thanks. Right. That was uh, uh, Dennis uh, Zubov from Crawford College in Lone Hill. Uh, Rafaela Halkast uh, from Trinity House, as well as Chardonnay Mudley from Tiger Valley.